Now, how long should you be on blood, blood thinners? Somebody said uh, you got to be on it for life. How do, how do we make that judgment? So here's kind of a clue. Here's a clue. Dr. Ansel uh, allu alluded to this before. If this is the first blood clot you ever had, and it's due to something we know causes blood clots, that's a short-term treatment. You have a knee replacement, you get a blood clot in a vein in a calf, I'm not leaving you on blood thinners for life. I know why you got it. That's a three-month treatment, and you're off to the races. If it's a recurrent, your second blood clot or more, or it happens and I can't explain why, so not throwing the medicine ball, uh, not having cancer. You know, you just come in out of the blue healthy, no air travel, nothing, and you've got a blood clot to the lung, I'm going to treat you for longer, at least six months. And I always talk about the need for indefinite or prolonged treatment. If you have cancer-related blood clots, first of all, I don't start with Coumadin. It doesn't really work. And I usually treat with one of these injectable medications until their cancer is controlled. So until they're in remission. And I'm happy with how things are going. I'm a big fan of compression stockings. They actually look a lot nicer now than they used to. A couple of words about IVC filters. Anybody here have an IVC filter? That's a big metal screen that's put in the vein in your belly to prevent the blood clot from the leg getting to the lungs couple of people. Some of you must have heard about this. If you've had blood clots, someone said to you somewhere along the way, well, we could put a filter in. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. OK. Oh, it's not the coffee filter. It's not, that's not what I meant. Look, the bottom line with filters is it's this screen that's placed through a small needle puncture in the vein in the groin that catches a blood clot when it breaks off from the leg and traps it so it doesn't make it to the lungs. You do this in a situation where either you can't give blood thinners for other reasons, or you're worried so much about this breaking off and going to the lungs. And the good news is that most patients with blood clots to the lungs really do very well. It's a very, very small percentage of people that are looking very sick at the time that they present. These are what these things look like. You can see they're wild designs. Look at this thing. Someone was drunk at night and just drew this thing on a piece of paper, and the next thing you know, it's um, made in a medical device. These have been around for, for a long time. But these are the new ones. Now, they don't, might not look different from you, except look at this little hook at the top. See that? These come out. So the cool thing about the new ones is, in the past, when we'd put these filters in, it was with you forever. Couldn't come out. Now, if you are... Someone you know is riding a motorcycle. God forbid they get in an accident and they have closed head trauma. That's a very high risk situation for blood clots, but only for a short period of time till they recover from their injury. You put in one of these retrievable filters for a week, the patient's awake and alert, moving around, you pull it out. It's a great thing, right? So when do we put in these filters? We put them in when you cannot get thin with, when you can't take blood thinners. So, Someone comes in with a blood clot to the lungs, and two days ago, they had major chest surgery for a lung cancer. Or they just coughed up blood because they've got a stomach ulcer or something. You can't give blood thinners right away. You put in, a, in a, uh, an IVC filter. There are lots of situations where we don't know if filters are needed or not, but people get them. So if we're going to dissolve a blood clot in a leg, which I'm going to talk to you about in a second, do you need a blood uh, filter put in to catch a piece of the blood clot while you're dissolving it? Or if you have a big blood clot in a vein or leg that looks like it's moving a little bit at the top, is that someone who needs a filter? We just don't know. We don't know. But you can see here that the rate of placing filters in the United States is astronomically rising. Look at this. These are these removable filters. So, if everybody who got one of these removable filters had them put in and pulled out for the right reason, you'd say, OK. But the fact is, only a third of these filters are ever removed. So they're put in because they think you need one. The advantage is it can be pulled out, but then it doesn't get pulled out. And bad things can happen. So now, I'm going to teach you how to read a CAT scan. This is easy. 
This is really easy. But let me tell you, I'm no x-ray radiologist. This is the spine. This is the belly wall. So you're laying on the table like this, right? This is your back. This is your belly. This is your aorta, big artery in the belly. See this thing right here? That's the top of one of those filters, OK? You're looking through a slice. See these two stripes here? Where the heck are they? The vein that's in here is right here. These have penetrated that vein wall and are sticking something else that shouldn't be stuck. That's pretty worrisome. Or they can break. Look at this one. Here's a filter where they're missing one piece broke off. And look, the sixth leg is still inside the body. So you can see, sometimes you need these filters, right? If you, can't, if you have a new blood clot and you can't get your blood thinned, you need a filter. But not everybody needs a filter, and they're not always safe. 